Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a shitty, wet Florida winter morning, which is actually, again, just fine by me because the temperature is good. Uh, I have no issues at all with putting up with a little bit of rain as long as the temperatures stay in the cool zone when you're not having this unusually hot winter. I always get that from the weather guys and it infuriates me. So, uh, and in fact, I think it's a little bit apropos today to have uh, sort of, you know, good British weather when I've got um, this particular car to look at. And this is a 2018 Rolls-Royce Dawn. Now, I've got to get this car back fairly quickly, so this is going to be a pretty short-term video. We're just going to fly through it really quick. And um, I recently did a modern Rolls-Royce. That was from Dave the Wholesaler. It was a ghost. Uh, I drove it for the weekend, and it was kind of a fun car. Uh, this one now comes from my German friend, Ulf. Uh, he's the guy who, um, well, he was kind enough to provide this, and he's the guy who was attacked by a duck. Uh, if you remember that story. I mean, that duck absolutely beat the living crap out of him. He was making a sling. He had an eye patch on. You know, it was uh, it was really, really bad. It was like Normandy or something. Uh, but uh, anyway, he healed from that, uh, you know, and it called me up the other day and said, hey, I have this ghost. Is it one you want to do? And I thought, you know, the hell yeah. Let's, let's do it. Why the hell not? Um, and it is a... Uh, what they call a drop head coupe, which is basically Ponzi British speak for convertible. And in fact, it's a bit irritating to me in a way that BMW is essentially the maker of this car. It is made in England, uh, but BMW is the force behind it, and they have the gall, the Germans, to use drop head coupe. But eh, what are you going to do? Uh, after some soul searching, and I discovered it while driving that ghost that I would fit very neatly into the giant fat rich bastard category. Uh, it's a lifestyle that seemed to come pretty naturally to me as I was driving around and parking at Walmart and, you know, looking at all the commoners. And uh, should the world ever see fit to stop crushing me under its shoe? and uh, you know, I'm able to actually make some money or something. I could see myself fitting into it very well. You know, while gently goosing the throttle on that car, I could see myself excoriating the chambermaids for leaving me a poorly plumped pillow or firing the gardener despite his pregnant wife because one of my champion Airedales got a bee sting. You know, I mean, I could just see that happening and it was easy for me. And I soon realized that it's no fun being poor uh, when you've got a natural talent for improperly using wealth. So it just proves that life isn't unfair. 
Uh, I can hear a weed whacker out there, which is just irritating. I hope it's not overtaking the audio here. Uh, but at least when I have one of these $400,000 cars plus uh, to review, I can dream a little before feeling the cruel jolt of reality rushing in and knocking the crap out of me. So uh, it's, it's a nice prop for a guy who likes to dream, and that's what I can do when I'm driving one. <sighs> anyway, uh, I covered the long-term history of Rolls-Royce uh, in that video, and I will link to it below. Uh, so we don't have to get into that, but I do want to recap slightly on the modern portion, the modern era, and how this particular car came to be. Uh, it go back to 1998, and after some very ugly German infighting uh, over the acquisition of Rolls-Royce and Bentley, um, an extremely convoluted deal was struck between Volkswagen uh, and BMW and Rolls-Royce Limited. Uh, having been sort of wrestled out by the opposing CEOs and even the president of Germany got involved, you know, to save the country some sort of face when, you know, big international lawsuit over, uh, over the ownership. It's weird it ever even got to that, but, um, but it was a big fight and essentially it ended up like this. Uh, Volkswagen would get Bentley and BMW would get Rolls-Royce. Uh, Volkswagen also got the famous Rolls-Royce factory and crew, which was kind of a big deal. Uh, and that meant BMW had to build a new production center in Goodwood uh, on land they bought from some Ponzi British Earl for like 65 million pounds. And up it went and they did that. And <laughs> the modern era, the rest is history. And then they proceeded to build these sort of very high end beautifully polished German cars with British styling to sell to uh, the very rich people in the world. Um, and the whole thing was something of an embarrassment for Volkswagen, but it seems to have all worked out at the end. I mean, VW seems happy enough with Bentley, and uh, BMW saved the fabled Rolls-Royce nameplate, um, and they bastardized it just enough to let it survive in our sort of shallow and godless era. <laughs> I mean, you know, Rolls-Royce was an incredible bespoke car company, handcrafting, you know, like the old Ferrari stuff where they're pounding out fenders on the cobblestones. That's what Rolls-Royce was. Then it existed in this weird sort of halfway state where they were still kind of doing that uh, and at the same time using a bunch of borrowed gear from other cars. You know, I mean, safety regulations and uh, unify, you know, all the government stuff made it so you couldn't just pound a car out anymore. It actually had to have standards that would um, let it be. And of course, the smaller companies had a lot of problems with that. But uh, so anyway, that's where Rolls-Royce was existing. And then uh, BMW saw the opportunity to build stuff like this and sell it at an immense profit uh, to some of the shallowest people in the world. And that's what they've been doing. Um, yeah. Looked at the press packet for this. It reads as follows, quite simply, it is the sexiest Rolls Royce ever built. Uh, and then it goes on, the early day chill of dawn provides an erotic tingle on the skin, awakening the senses and passions as the day begins. This is from the brochure for this car. I mean, it sounds like something more from Lady Chatterley than the Rolls Royce I know. And frankly, I blame the Germans for this. I mean, we've all seen their pornography, even by accident. And uh, we know how screwed up these people are. So um, for that to make its way into the Rolls Royce catalog just absolutely shocks me. Uh, but anyway, the size of this thing, but despite that, um, it's actually smaller than the Phantom drop head coupe which it replaced. Uh, the Phantom was not necessarily BMW based as this one. I mean, look, you get under the beautiful skin on this car and you end up with the BMW 7 Series and that's a big part of why it's profitable. That was not true of the Phantom. Uh, but uh, this, <laughs> it's not to say the price tag reflects that by the way. Um, but anyway, so this is to replace the Phantom and it's smaller, but it's still friggin' enormous. And um, they stopped building the Phantom in 2016. I think it's come out again, or is coming out. Uh, but it was only their third convertible produced in 50 years and could trace its ancestry back to the Rolls-Royce Corniche of 1966, a car that I quite frankly like and uh, always have. Uh, if you remember the Rolls-Royce in the Cannonball run, 
just absolutely love that. Uh, the most distinguishing feature on this thing is the uh, rear hinge doors. You can see the handles up there at the front of the door. So, you know, call it suicide doors, call it what you want. Uh, but what's interesting is if you open both doors wide and uh, look at it from the front, it sort of takes on the profile of a flasher, you know, with the trench coat wide open. And I'm not sure that's exactly what, um, what Rolls-Royce had in mind, but I get the feeling the guy who wrote the words for the brochure probably wouldn't be bothered by that. Uh, anyway, look, it's getting a little bit rainier. I'm going to pause here for a minute, dry off my camera, and uh, zip back out to endure this British weather for the sake of any viewer out there who may want to see this thing. So bear with me one moment. All right, so let's keep plugging along and damn the rain. We'll just keep going. Um, you know, I, I kind of sold cars like this back in the day at Auto House. You know, mostly Bentleys or that sort of thing. And I remember guys had come in and you know, they'd, oh my God, the repair costs on that thing. And, you know, oh, they, you know, yeah, man, when you're paying this much for the car, the repair costs are a feature, okay? They're not a problem. I mean, basically, it's telling the world that, hey, I can afford to drive this thing, unlike all the animals around me. So, um, the minute you hear someone complaining about repair costs on these cars, you know they're not going to be buying one. And if they do, they shouldn't have. There's the rain harder again. Anyway, I won't have another shot at this car, so we may as well keep going. Uh, the styling is undoubtedly attractive. I mean, they've done a very fine job of making the car imposing and making it look like a real, true Rolls-Royce in the lineage of what's probably the most elite car company in the world. Uh, you've got this big, you know, radiator-style traditional grill leading the way. It looks fantastic. Uh, you've got kind of a swoopy, it's a bit high in the front end, very tall, very formal. Um, you've got the spirit of ecstasy here. Let's see if I can get it to come out. I think I got the key in my pocket, uh, which is covered up by this little little guy. All right, here we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so there it is. So that's uh, that when you, you know, start driving the car, it comes up when you park or, you know, if the GPS senses you're in kind of a bad section of town, you know, somewhere possibly populated by uh, Bentleys or Mercedes-Benz products or, God forbid, some sort of Genesis, uh, that thing's probably just going to go down automatically when it sort of it geo caches to know where it's at. Um, you've got these 21-inch wheels, which look small on this giant car. Uh, you see the Rolls-Royce logos there in the center caps, the way they're perfectly uh, aligned. That's because, like those clown cars where they had spinning hubcaps if you remember that was a thing in the past or even the wheels uh, those center caps are on bearings so that they are always in that position which um i think is really really silly but i guess it adds to the panache somehow uh, you got the rolls royce badge on the fender you've got an extremely long swooping uh front hood going into pretty good angle on that uh, windshield, much more raked than you'd think. Uh, enormous mirrors, huge chrome door handles, again for those rear hinge doors. Uh, the drop top is very nice and tight, comes in a variety, I mean you can order this thing any way you want. Uh, it's pretty incredible actually the way they've done that. Uh, it goes into this sort of short and stubby rear deck, you've got chrome surround taillights, you've got big twice pipes at the bottom, uh, Rolls-Royce grill. I mean this is uh, Rolls-Royce grill, Rolls-Royce badge on that, um, on that trunk plate. Uh, you know this is obviously the best Rolls-Royce that Germany can provide and um, you do have to hand it to them, they did a pretty good job. Uh, I'm gonna just very quickly look inside the trunk, I'm sure I can pinch or yeah there we go oh it is power you see a nice chrome uh scuff plate there and it's actually really small uh you know you could fit maybe two toddlers in this thing maybe a suitcase maybe a set of golf clubs i presume this is small because of the um uh the space that the top takes up uh but you know for a car like this it's pretty i mean how the hell is your posh wife going to bring her 19 suitcases. You're going to have to have some sort of a uh, servant driving a van behind it with her luggage. But um, 
you know, maybe for a guy it's enough. But anyway, that's the trunk. It's actually pretty small, uh, very well finished though. And we've got some sort of mysterious crap up there, which I'm not gonna get into because we're pressed for time and rain. So uh, give this BMW switch gear a push and down comes the trunk. I have a quick look under the hood. Why is this not opening? I have the key on me. What the hell is going on here? There we go. All right, let's see if we can have a look under here. Okay, so in the unlikely event that anyone who actually owns one of these cars opens up the hood, I think they're going to be a little disappointed to see plastic Rolls-Royce badges on top of this plastic engine cover instead of that beautiful sort of machined aluminum uh, thinned valve cover that, you know, had Rolls-Royce stamped to it on the old days. But, um, yeah, anyway, chances are strong they're not even going to look under there anyway, so may, maybe it really doesn't matter. Uh, what this is is a 6.6 .6 liter, like in the old Trans Ams, uh, V12 with turbos. Puts out 563 horsepower, uh, which is enough to rush it to 60 in 4.3 seconds and a quarter mile of 12.8 uh, at 114 topping out at a governed speed of 155 so i mean for a 5600 pound car this thing is fast as hell uh it's absolutely shocking i'm gonna get the hood down before it all gets wet uh it has an eight speed zf transmission of course german uh that actually does use the gps uh, in order to know when you're coming up to curves, going around corners, stoplights, and it shifts accordingly to make it nice and smooth. So um, there's some technology in there. Uh, it gets it, 12 miles per the gallon in the city, uh, 18 highway, 14 combined. So you're not really doing well on the fuel mileage, but doesn't matter. You got a big hefty independent front suspension. Uh, up there, you've got um, a rear air suspension with active anti-roll bars, so it's all smooth as hell. And uh, it does perform mechanically uh, the way that a Rolls-Royce should. And despite it being a BMW engine, they have smoothed it out enough uh, to, make it, um, to make it feel like a real Rolls engine. All right, it's raining hard. I'm going to run for cover and uh, come back in a couple minutes if it dies down a little. All right, well, I think the rain has died down enough for me to just quickly finish this thing. What a disaster this video has been. But again, this was the only day the car would be available to me, so I figured we might as well try and knock it out. The rain wasn't supposed to be here till 10, but of course, it doesn't always work out that way. At least there's no animals around, so we've got something. Uh, but uh, anyway, look, let's have a look inside this thing. And again, the most distinguishing feature uh, of the car is these front opening doors and rear. I mean, you know, it's like a rat rod or something. I, you know, I suppose they're called suicide doors, but I've always thought of that more as a four-door setup rather than uh, two. But uh, either way, uh, it is a very distinguishing feature and also sort of says, you know, hey, I don't park in the parking garage or the supermarket, you know, because it really isn't practical to do so. And again, the, you know, the people who own this thing, you know, whether they be aristocrats or uh, musicians or, you know, rappers, football players, whatever, um, I don't know if they're using it properly. I mean, you really would have to be one of these, um, you know, British earls or whatnot. You park in your big open court out front, uh, you know, or you have it parked when you go somewhere. The idea that you're going to pull in a parking space is just silly. But um, well, these are the things I'm going to have to learn when life stops being so friggin' cruel. Anyway, you give it a tug. There you can see the rear door, uh, or the rear door, the door does open. Lovely chrome scuff plate, miles deep, beautiful. Uh, BMW has done a fantastic job of materials and leathers and fit and finish. And then the customizable as I mean, these things start at like, the base price is like 360 or something. And the average options list probably adds another hundred grand onto it. And you can do just about anything you want, including, by the way, in the brochure, it says you can use a tree from one of your own estates to have the wood veneer done. 
and um, I, that's helpful to me because that's something I was thinking about doing. Uh, but anyway, the Canadians in the back are obviously going to be ensconced in luxury. You can only fit two in there. Uh, they do have their own little center console with gun and drug storage, uh, even little nets on the side they can put shit. Uh, you see, all, it's kind of like a 20 speaker system. There's two of them back there. Um, there's a version of this car that puts, uh, turns it into like a two-seat roadster, like the um, old Thunderbird sports roadster, a thing that goes in the back where the, it fits into where the headrests are and uh, adds an interesting look to it. I'll put a picture in. Uh, but anyway, you can see everyone's going to be happy back there. Uh, you got a cashmere headliner, which is quite fancy. You got all kinds of seat buttons, and you know, these are obviously all very well crafted and made out of actual metal, at least most of them. Uh, the front seats, again, you know, you're being ensconced in luxury, very soft and supple leather, probably only from the finest cows that were you know, educated at Cambridge. Uh, they're heated, they're cooled, uh, they're massaging. Uh, you know, it uses BMW style switch gear, but done in chrome and, you know, obviously made for Rolls Royce. I did notice that getting in and out of this thing, uh, it becomes a bit of a stretch going for the door. Um, and I'm glad I saw this before I closed it. Lest we forget, we've got umbrellas. What a good day for that today. Uh, they do fit nicely into um, the, and by the way, these get robbed all the time. The minute the car gets traded in, the detailer robs them, you know, and then they have to go track it down. Uh, but anyway, there it is. You've got a nice umbrella set up with the Rolls Royce and logo on it right there in the door jam. Uh, but yeah, reaching for that door to close it is not necessarily easy. All right, let's fire it up. That's, you know, very traditional. Foot on the brake, press that guy. There you see that panel comes up to reveal the infotainment setup. Very, now stop your binging for God's sake. Anyway, it comes up to a very um, Lexus SC430 style, that panel. Uh, and then it reveals what's basically a BMW infotainment system. I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, that's exactly what that is. Uh, you get down here, you control it with an iDrive setup that's been changed to look for a Rolls Royce. You can get in and switch all the crap around your my, you know, my vehicle. I bet we can raise and lower our spirit of, yeah, there it is. There's spirit of ecstasy. Uh, you can raise it and you're going to lower it. Probably can't see it. Yeah, there it goes down. Uh, or you just make it automatic, which is which is fine. So anyway, there's lots of interesting stuff there. Uh, you get over into the gauges, which are quite fascinating the way they're set up. With you know, they're behind glass, but they're three dimensional. Uh, you've got 150, 160 mile an hour speedo. Uh, the lane assist thing looks a little bit weird, and a thing that's been designed to look so vintage. Uh, yet there it is. You've got a uh, temperature with the fine little needles. All the needles are really fine. Uh, power reserve it has instead of attack, which is kind of an odd gauge, but also does harken back to earlier Rolls Royce models. You also have a little ensconced spirit of ecstasy there stamped into your door panel. And uh, all the switch gear, of course, is just very high end, very fancy, and uh, the best that Germany can come up with. You can see belt on. Uh, the steering wheel. I, you know, when I was reading about this car in order to do the review, they kept saying it was thin, but I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought that it was going to be a lot thinner than it actually is. Um, this feels a bit fat to me, and I don't know if it's just because it's a two-tone leather setup, but it feels kind of fat and not as elegant as I would have hoped. Uh, I do like the switch gear. It's, you know, an interesting, like the shifter is a modern version of that little electric shifter, the earlier rolls stuff had, your turn signal the same there, um, your lights, controls, again, made to look, you know, rolls royce -y, but definitely BMW-ish. Uh, there's all your lane assist crap, all very nice. You know, all these little knobs are knurled, the plungers, the vents are made out of metal. You got buttons in the steering wheel to control a bunch of crap. Um, what do you got over here? That's probably night vision, or no, it just probably changes the camera is what it does. Uh, over here you've got, um, what's fascinating, a manual climate control. Uh, again, probably designed to look like, you know, and these sliders, again, all retro-ish, harkening back to earlier uh, Rolls-Royce models. 
Uh, you got a little place for storage here, that size bag. You still get an ashtray, two of them actually, which is nice because only the poor and the very rich smoke as it turns out. So this does give you an ashtray, which you can use in there. And up there, you've got a couple of cup holders, which is very gauche, by the way. Can't imagine Lady Diana drinking a coffee while she's driving her dawn around. Uh, you've got another ensconced little analog clock, because nothing says fancy and expensive like an analog clock, so it's prerequisite. Uh, you've got a glove box. You've got a BMW mirror with the same you know, little motion sensor that they had on a 2002 325 convertible. Uh, you've got your uh, headrests and cocaine mirrors nicely trimmed in chrome and, you know, everything looking pretty cool. So, uh, let me get that wheel down a little bit and get it in gear. See if we have some wipers somewhere. I don't know where the hell those are. Here they are. And let's go for a quick spin. Okay, so here's the thing, man. When you're behind the wheel on this and, you know, you've got that spirit of ecstasy up there leading the way, uh, you just inherently feel that much better than all the people around you. And I've got that vibe right now, that vibe where I'm firing the gardener or molesting the chambermaids. I just, you know, I, it makes you sit up straight and, you know, tilt your head at a certain angle. And, uh, you know, this car is made, again, for kind of a youthful annoying clientele that has the means for conspicuous consumptions. The top really should be down so that you can be on display. Uh, but to me, I'd probably be more the coupe and sedan guy. Not entirely visible, but maybe they can see my shadow and they wonder, you know, how great I am. <laughs> Just uh, Anyway, look, it's smooth. It's fast. I mean, that was... Even though you don't really feel it inside, this thing just exploded with power, which is tremendous. Um, the steering is incredible. The suspension is, you know, you know that it's going over bumps and whatnot, but you don't really, there, there's a hint of them. You just know it's happening, but you don't really feel it. It's, it's more of a, um, it's just more of a feeling about what's going on. Uh, again, the GPS controlled transmission shifts very nicely. Uh, the steering is light and feels quite elegant. And that's, you know, look, th this is what they pulled off. Long story short, whether you are, again, a head of state, uh, a third world dictator, uh, you know, master of Wall Street, uh, rapper, uh, high end football player. If you want to display your wealth, then BMW has taken the Rolls-Royce name and given you a very, very good way to do it. Um, you know, th this thing just exudes, hey, I have arrived, I have made it, and everyone else can go take a hike. And that's, you know, that's probably what it's all about. I mean, you don't really buy this car uh, because you want to blend in. I mean, let's be honest. You're buying this thing because you want to try to torture the people around you. And, um, yeah, because you could go buy an S-Class convertible and it really gives you pretty much most of what this thing gives you. I mean, uh, what this does is add an extra 250 grand to that in a way that people are going to know what you did. And that's it. So anyway, there it is. I think this is a 2018 uh, Rolls-Royce Dawn. Uh, many, many thanks to Ulf for letting me borrow it. This is not going to be a long drive because i got to get the thing back to him. Uh, and I'm meeting him in the other direction. So I'm going to pull in here and just make a U-turn. Uh, but um, uh, the video probably would have been better without the rain. So cut me some slack on that. I'm wet. <laughs> Miserable. But once it passes, we've got a nice cold front coming through. And, uh, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. Well, pretty good turning radius, too. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it just goes like a freight train when you hammer it. And you can kind of hear that V12, uh, but not quite. I mean, just, again, they've got, they really dialed it in. I got to say, the BMW engineers really dialed it in uh, to give you the modern feel of a Rolls Royce experience. To me, it's not really a true Rolls the way that one of these 
absolute handcrafted, you know, things of the past is, but it probably will start up every morning and probably will get you where you're going in relative safety and probably nothing's going to fall off it as you do. So, you know, you at least have that going for it. Uh, thank you very much for having a look. Really appreciate it. And we will see you with the next one. Take care.